Good afternoon. Uh, this is my AIOS membership number, P13884. So our research question was, is weak corneal biomechanics a biomarker for glaucoma in eyes with pseudoexfoliation? So pseudoexfoliation is a condition characterized by abnormal fibular deposits in the eye, and it increases the risk of glaucoma. However, not all eyes with pseudoexfoliation develop glaucoma, and there's an insufficient data on what factors confer this increased risk. Therefore, our hypothesis was, amongst eyes with pseudoexfoliation, those with weaker corneal biomechanics may increase the risk of glaucoma. To test this hypothesis, we use the Corvus ST, which records the entire dynamic reaction of the cornea to a fixed air impulse as shown in this video. It's basically an NCT to which they've attached a Shimefly camera. Besides measuring the IOP and the CCT, it also provides us with certain biomechanical parameters as shown here. As the cornea moves inwards, we get the first aplanation point where we can calculate the velocity of the cornea as well as the length of the aplanated area. It then continues to move inwards and becomes concave. And at the peak concavity, that is the highest concavity, we have three parameters. The deformation amplitude, which is the total distance moved of the corneal apex from the start to this highest concavity point in millimeters. The peak distance, which is the distance between the two corneal bending points and the radius of curvature shown here in the figure. The cornea then resumes its original convex uh, position, and it goes through an A2, an application 2 phase, where again velocity and length are calculated. Having uh, described this background, I'll now go on to our study, whose objective was to compare the corneal biomechanical parameters between eyes with pseudoexfoliation glaucoma, pseudoexfoliation syndrome, no and normal eyes using Corvus ST. This was a prospectively planned cross-sectional study. We excluded eyes with prior IOP lowering therapy, corneal pathology, angle closure disease, and retinal and neurological pathology. A complete ocular examination was performed. We did a Goldman applination tonometry and Corvus ST in random order, and those eyes with high IOP or suspicious discs also underwent an OCT and visual fields. Uh, we used the above tests and classified the 142 eyes included into the following four categories. Normals were those with IOP less than 21 with normal disc and field. Pseudoexfoliation group was similar to the normals with the addition of pseudoexfoliation deposits in the anterior segment. The, the next group was pseudoexfoliation eyes, which had a higher IOP, but normal disc and field, and they were classified as PXF with ocular hypertension. And last were the frank PXT, which had abnormal disc and field. We use the ANOVA statistic for, difference, for differentiating the means between the groups, and an ANCOVA for adjusting for the confounders. Coming to our results, the four groups were demographically similar. The clinical features sh are shown here. There was a significantly uh, lower IOP, both GAT and Corvus, in the normal and PXF group compared to the other two groups. Importantly, the CCT was similar across the four groups. And the visual field parameters were worse in the PXG group compared to the other three groups. Coming to the biomechanical parameters, there were three that showed a difference across the group. The deformation amplitude was significantly higher in the normal and PXF group compared to the other two groups. Uh, that is, it was greater than one. And the A1 and A2 velocities were also significantly different across the groups. However, we know that corneal biomechanics is affected by age, CCT, and IOP. And although in our study age and CCT were similar across the groups, IOP was not. And when we plotted the GAT IOP along the x-axis and deformation amplitude across the y-axis, we saw that there was a significant association between the two. That is, as the intraocular pressure increased, the deformation amplitude decreased. Therefore, we redid the analysis with an ANCOVA statistic accounting for the intraocular pressure, and then found that there was no difference across the groups. So how does this um, compare with previous studies? There's a lot of uh, work done on biomechanics in primary open angle glaucoma, both using ORA and Corvus, which showed that corneal hysteresis is lower in eyes with POAG. It's also associated with glaucoma progression. And Corvus studies have shown that deformation amplitude is altered in POAG eyes. However, biomechanics in PXG is not extensively studied. And this is the first study which has established that Corvus biomechanics in eyes with PXG does not differ from normal in PXF eyes. Therefore, to conclude, um, sorry, w one more thing about the strength of this study is that we included only treatment naive eyes. And this is because drugs such as prostaglandins are known to affect the extracellular matrix and can result in a less stiff cornea. Again, another strength of the study was the detailed phenotyping that was used to classify the eyes with pseudoexfoliation. 
In conclusion, we ask the question, is weak corneal biomechanics a biomarker for glaucoma in eyes with pseudoexfoliation? And the answer was no. This is because pseudoexfoliation glaucoma is probably a high pressure disease. And unlike POAG, corneal biomechanics has a less important role in its diagnosis and pathogenesis. Future studies should evaluate the effect of anti-glaucoma medication and IOP lowering on the Corvus ST parameters. Thank you.